here at the DeLand Sport Aviation Showcase. Year number one, day number two. One of the most impressive displays out here, partly because it's all up in the air, and well, you got a good view from up here, is the Viking aircraft engine display. I'm Dan Johnson, and I'm talking with Jana Egenfeller, who's going to be the man that shows us around the engines you had today, and you're also the man behind the engine. So right. you should know a thing or two. Well, the uh, one exciting thing about this show is that Viking is a uh, major sponsor of this show. Uh, we have committed for 10 years because we believe in this show. Is that right? Excellent. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, we like to be up front, and uh, here we are, like you said, off the ground. And uh, we just want to show that the uh, light sport aircraft engines are alive and that uh, Viking has something to offer that we think is going to help that continue on. All right, so let's talk about engines now, because yeah. that's the heart and soul of the company. It is the company. And I know we're looking at a Honda engine, and I know it makes a bunch of power. And I just told you about all I know. So well, it's, it's it so is. What, a, which one are we looking at here? This is the what we call a 135. Okay. You know, a Viking 135, which in fact is just a Honda engine. Um, it is an inline engine. It's it's probably the most popular layout of an engine in the automotive industry. They use inline four cylinders for a lot of reasons. They're uh, economical to make. They're uh, very sturdy, being that the cylinders are in the same cylinder head. There's not ah, as much okay. plumbing on them because if you have, let's say, a traditional airplane engine, usually they have individual jugs, we call them, or cylinders, which necessita necessitates uh, bringing exhaust pipes between them, bringing wires between them, uh, bringing cooling systems between them, exhaust system, all that intake piping, which in an inline four is pretty much eliminated like Honda has actually gone to the extent now where yeah the intake has to go to individual cylinders but in fact the exhaust system and we might look at that later as far as a picture of it is integral to the engine it, it really? all the exhaust pipes that you used to see on engines that yeah. are external where they all come together into a manifold that's all now done that's into inside the, the engine. in the cylinder head which means it's being cooled by the liquid and uh, later on when we talk about the turbo engine that has some advantages Okay, well, yeah. that, that is very interesting, and I did not know that about these it, engines. It reduces but... the number of parts and the, and the possibility of uh, exhaust leaks underneath the cowling. Sometimes you end up breathing that inside uh -huh. the, the cockpit. Uh, no leaks and so forth. And, and the other thing about it is we actually run a catalytic converter. So between this engine and non -lit... On the airplane engine. Yeah. I mean, we know about this in cars. Right, but right. you got it on but, airplanes, but too. Okay. Viking actually is the, the, I would say we are the, the, there's a lot of talk now about green. Uh, you got electric, you got this, you got hydrogen and all that. In fact, we are every day flying almost zero polluted, uh, zero pollution engines because we have a catalytic converter and we use non-leaded auto fuel. Cool. So, so okay. Well, one of the questions I was going to ask is what kind of fuel does the engine require? It's an automobile engine. Should right. it use automobile gas? And it does. And having direct injection, which means the fuel is not sprayed into the uh, throttle body, like throttle body injection. Yeah, there's not. Well, there's normally kind of a big manifold up here that distributes. That well, it stuff. goes right into the cylinder. That's what we call multi-point fuel injection. Well, in fact, Honda has that's got a spark plug-like thing that goes yeah, into each. Yeah, except engine. they're injectors. Yes, but, but it looks, but looks, looks like a spark plug. Color. Now, what what Honda has done here, and a lot of the modern car engines the last few years, they've gone kind of like a diesel, where they spray the fuel directly into the cylinder, and that's done by this uh, this pump that's being driven that's by this the camshaft. That's this part up here, huh? Okay. That's this part. It puts the fuel up to a much higher pressure, and it runs it then in a stainless steel line and, and uh, heavy-duty injectors, much like a diesel engine. It's underneath the manifold. We can't really see them. Yeah, yeah. I can kind of follow the line yeah, down here, yeah. but it's just And it a goes small... right into the cylinder. And the thing that's really neat about that, like you can read up on it on, you know, watch YouTube videos and so forth and so on, learn about direct injection. And direct injection was used on, on bombers and things. They, they actually had it in the old days. Most things was always done before, as you know. Yeah, right. But now it's back around. And uh, it cools the engine from the inside out. It, it shoots the fuel into the cylinder, and it then evaporates internal to the cylinder, and it cools the engine. The engine is so efficient between the, the friction reduction technology that Honda's put in and firing the fuel into the cylinder that you don't need an oil cooler. The, the oil is very cool. It's always perfectly clean. It's, there's a lot of little things that are advanced yet not complicated about this engine. Right. Where do you get your engines and how is it possible you can have enough to actually make a business out of that? Well, the, 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 the unfortunate thing for people that buy uh, cars is that there are a lot of other cars on the road, so fender benders do happen. 
And uh, because there's a Honda dealer, or maybe two of them in every single town in a country that has 300 million people, uh, the market for used, very low time engines that are undamaged from fender benders is huge. Being able to recycle these, engine, these engines is phenomenal. It's because, kind of a green thing, actually. Well, it is a green thing, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, you know, people will still ask us, well, can I have a new one? Yeah, sure. We can get new engines. But it surely it's, costs more. It's then. more money. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So tell me again the direct. Direct injection. GDI, gasoline GDI. direct injection. Okay. And why is the word gasoline in front of that? Because direct injection was usually diesel. Ah, you know, okay. a diesel engine is always like this. And the new thing is to use. Uh, have gasoline engines actually inject the fuel into the cylinder. I see, okay. Yeah. So that's a big help for you. Now, this engine produces how much power? It produces 130 horsepower. And, and what uh, kind of aircraft would you use that on, Jan? Or what, what, or well, what are your customers using it on, I guess? The, the, you know, Zenit has always been good with us. We do a lot with Zenit. Uh, and we do RB12s. Uh, now the RB9 market is open for this engine. Oh, is it? Uh, okay. Yeah, the just aircraft. Um, Pretty much any light sport, uh, kit built, home built airplane can use this engine, or if they need more power, our other other models. I feel like I see your name, a Viking, your name that is, I mean, yeah. uh, pop up more and more with people, and you put out some very nice pictures. You do a great job with photography, and uh, it seems like every time you send one of those out, it's a different airplane. It's yeah, commonly and, a Zenith, I agree, but it's not right, always that right. by any stretch. Right. Now, we, you know, we, we, we had an engine called a 110. We did that for five years. Just like I, I was just down talking to Just Aircraft, I said, you know, guys, listen to me. You guys have come out with better planes the last couple of years. And I talked to this people and that person and said, you've all done good. You've all come out with better products. It's the same with Viking. You know, we had a good 110, but it wasn't, it didn't pull the Sea Ray out of the water better than the Rotax. It was just less money. Well, guess what? We now have engines that will cost less money and perform better. You know, like the Sea Ray will jump out of the water with a 130. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing and, uh, 130. Well, uh, other companies have bumped it up just that much, and, and everyone seems to be expecting big things from that. So that's right, great. Right. Now, folks, so we're going to tell you something about prices here, but you may watch this video in the future. We're going to give you a web address at the end. Go ask you on what the price is when you watch the video. But today, right here at the Deland 2016 show, what would a 130 engine cost? 11,900. Well, that's yeah. way under. A comparable engine. Well, I mean, there is no comparable engine. Well, there, there's nobody that has the technology of Honda. I mean, just in power alone. In it's, uh, the aviation business, nobody has the technology of Honda. Nobody has gasoline direct injection. This is this is not a lesser expensive. It happens to be less money, but it is also a far superior engine in technology. Better stuff, lower price. Can't hardly beat that. That's great. Well. Talk a little bit about weight of this engine, and then we want to look at the turbo engine. Okay. But, uh, and and you know, if you told me a number, I'd probably go, okay, that's a number. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily know what that meant because right, there's right, parts sure. you have to add on that may not be well, in that. Well, let me give you but one example. Base it against something like the Rotax 912, which almost right. everybody knows. They may not know the weight of that engine either, but they know what that engine's about. So right. how do you compare to that weight-wise? Well, with the Rotax, we're 30, 30 more horsepower, and we're about 30 more pounds. Okay, but the the I give you an exact example, which is John Croak is a little bit famous in the business. He sells DVDs of how to put airplanes together. He had an O200 in his Zenit, okay, uh, cruiser, and he now updated to the Viking 130 because he's got a short field. He needs a little more oomph to get out. Okay, and um, a little and ended the up O200 with a, is 100 horsepower, right? So it's, it's quite a bit more power, right? But it's uh, it's uh, it's a um, little bit like five pounds less than an O200. Okay. Um, we okay. had, uh, there's a Zenit uh, 601 XL on the field here that flew down from Missouri. Has this engine, the 130 Viking. Uh, removed a six cylinder Corvair engine and exactly the same weight. So th those are numbers that people can relate okay, to. Okay, right. Everything. Yeah, that's a yeah. good reference yeah. uh, to it. The, right. the point being, it's a little more weight, but it's quite a bit more power. Right. And the, so that the, offsets the weight. Exactly. As long as you do, can balance your airplane, which we have done in the RB12 and in the Zenith. Yeah, no you problem. mean as, for, as the placement of the engine relative to yeah. the CG yeah. and, and that that's sort what of we thing. do for people. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also, under a cowling, uh, the, the, the phys not the weight now, but the physical dimension of the engine and getting it underneath a cowl. Okay. How does that all work for people? Well, we do the cowling. You unless, make the cowling. Yeah, okay. unless someone, we do fire. People kind of think we don't do firewall forward because we went away from having a single price for firewall forward. 
what we did is we made a shopping cart with all the parts a, a la carte. So people uh, obviously can buy an engine mount for their plane. They can buy a cowling for their plane. They can buy an exhaust uh, system for their plane. They can buy silicone elbows and radiators and things like that. What we don't want is people to be locked into having to buy it from us. So they can buy, you know, what they want, you know, okay. from us. So now we're looking at a turbocharged engine, Jan. Can you walk us through how this engine is different than the 130 we just looked at? And you refer to this as how? Well, uh, as a Viking 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, and 200 horsepower engine. And people laugh at me when I say <laughs> that. I'm just about to do that. So, yeah. and so what does that mean? It means that whatever you want. And the reason is that it, it can run on all different boost levels. Oh, the that's turbo the turbo shift, effect. Yeah. It, oh, okay, it, it okay. is what determines the power. You know, so as long as your airplane can, can have the weight of a, like a 250 or so pound engine, then you can have any power you want, depending on how much you need. I see, okay. Now, the, this engine is not out of the Honda Fit like we spoke of. This is actually out of the Civic. The Civic, okay. yeah, 2016, which is what we are in now, the Civic was offered with an optional turbocharged 1.5 liter engine. And it's like a first for Honda to do turbocharging. Um, I think so it's, it's their turbo, you're not adding the turbocharger. Well, this is what's cool because, yes, we, you're, like you're saying, we did not add the turbocharger. We took an engine that's turbocharged by Honda, which means it is designed to be turbocharged. It's designed to run on half a bar of pressure, half an atmosphere, uh, about nine pounds, which is like 18 inches of manifold pressure. And if you add that to 30, like then you end up with about 50 inches of manifold pressure okay. for, for pilot talk. It's yeah, 50, yeah, yeah. 50 inches of manifold pressure at maximum output. Okay. So, But the cool thing, like you're saying, is that it is not done by Viking. I mean, we're proud of designing things, but when it comes to the turbo, I don't believe that you should turbocharge a normally aspirated engine. It should be designed all the way from the crankshaft yeah. through the connecting rods, through the combustion chamber, through the controller of the turbocharger. It is all Honda. And this brings us back to what you, what we mentioned before about that exhaust manifold that was cooled yeah, by yeah, liquid. Right, uh -huh. Well, Honda has a lot of videos on there on YouTube that shows the reduction of temperature between the exhaust exit and the turbocharger. It drops at almost 200 degrees before it gets to the wow. turbocharger, which traditionally turbochargers would die for because of overheating. Yes, right. I've heard that before. They have to yeah. have intercoolers and things like that. Well, we do have that. You have an intercooler yeah. as well. Okay. But it cools the, the exhaust gas before it gets to the turbo, and then the turbo itself is liquid cooled through these lines. Um, and of course, also is oil fed like a traditional turbocharger. So those are those are things that Honda, between that and gasoline direct injection, they said they said why why don't we do turbocharging now when we can control the the temperature of the engine by injecting the fuel directly, ah, and I see. we can cool, I see the, magic the, here. Okay. cool the, the exhaust before it hits the turbo. Yeah. Well, I love that it's all Honda because right. they are making these engines. When they started making this particular engine with the turbo, my guess is they're making if not hundreds of thousands or millions, at least tens of thousands, exactly. like an aviation company could so never Viking, hope to do. Yeah, and then Viking gets involved with you know the, the actual plumbing of the turbo and an intercooler, which is a very small one. And then uh, we put a gearbox on it and we have a torsion resonance system between the gearbox and the engine. Um, we uh, still run a, a converter on a catalytic converter to, to have a zero emission engine. Um, mounting the engine we do through, um, we, we build engine mounts that are on the back of the engine and they interface with mounts that we make for airplanes or an adapter. Like for, for instance, this engine will also go in the uh, Vans series of aircraft. Okay, so and the individual who buys the engine from you doesn't have to go figure out how to mount it. No. You sent no. firewall forward kits before, but that includes the engine mount to the airframe. Yeah, that's the engine okay. mount to the airframe. Uh, for the Vans kits like the uh, 9 and the 7 and the 6, there will be adapters so that the engine will actually fit on a Lycoming mount. I see, okay. Yeah, because, Great. So that'll be an easy, easy retrofit for that. Okay, cool. All right, well, and, and this engine, I'm guessing, is more money because it's more hardware and it's more power and all the rest of that. Again, yeah. folks, go find out the current information. But today, what does this engine sell for? 18900 18. It's still, I mean, an engine of that kind of power, up to 200 horsepower at the max. Yeah. Uh, you'd spend twice that probably, or more. Yeah, and let me elaborate, elaborate a little bit about the power. We are now flying it at 170 horsepower. That is the half a bar. That is what the car does. Okay, okay. We have dyno tested it, and it will do easy 200 with no detonation and so forth and so on. 
I would not go out there and recommend it for 200 horsepower for longevity reasons, but I would recommend it for installations where you need 200 horsepower, like in a gyrocopter, where you would need it to get off the ground okay. temporarily. But for a sustained power output, it's 170. I see. Well, we already know that from, let's say, the Rotax 914, which has more power, but just for a while. Right, exactly. And then you're supposed to back off, but right. but it does carry that power up to a higher altitude, more power up to a higher altitude. I'm sure this does that as well, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, it, this engine could go uh, past 30,000 feet and still have sea level performance, which <laughs> as soon as you do that, you know, like my, my Zenit is, you know, we have so much power now in a cruiser, a Zenit cruiser, that we won the stall competition at Zenit, and we beat the 701 with the Rotax, and we have a, a much heavier cruiser plane. Right. Yet I can cruise at a true airspeed of 163 miles an hour, which is totally unheard of in a Zenit. And that puts me, <laughs> it, it puts yes. me. Yes, that's pretty fast. <laughs> Even in the cruiser, which is faster than the 750. Right. Now but this is true airspeed, not, uh, to, exceed, not right. to exceed V and E. Right, of Because 160, this is a 12,000 feet. Yeah, you're talking indicated number there. Yes, exactly. Yes, right. Yeah. At altitude. Right. And I can't even imagine in an RV-9 at 18,000 feet. Yeah, it seems like you wrote about that your way back oh. from uh, the, the Mexico gathering. Of yeah, the I can Zero. do nonstop from Mexico to Florida. <laughs> and that's the other thing with gasoline direct injection. The fuel efficiency is out of this world. Yeah. Well, so, okay. Talk about that. And, and talk about that for both engines, John. Fuel efficiency is something very important for everybody. So what's right. the burn rate on these two? Well, I'm, I'm going to, because it's, as both you and me know, that question means nothing unless you reference it to something. Right. So I'm going to I give agree. an example. My friend uh, Dick Jones, which is here, flew down from uh, Missouri with his 60, I think I mentioned that, uh, his 601 XL. Yes, right. You said that. Uh -huh. Yeah. He has the other engine we talked about, the 130. Okay. And that's also gasoline direct injected. He used 4.4 gallons an hour at 145 miles an hour. Wow. And that's with no wheel pants in a uh, low wing zenith. Okay, so very good then. And that's, I mean, a that's, good, good that's fuel an average economy. number from Missouri to Florida. And what would you say about this more powerful engine? What's a typical, I, I know the question the relates to where you have the throttle, is, where you're at, how right, much you're loaded. Right. There's a lot of other factors in there, but. Well, I'm happy to report that at 170 horsepower, it'll suck the fuel in like crazy <laughs> because that's important. And, and you can feel it. It pushes you in the back of the seat. Like you, you're is actually, that right? Oh, yeah. There is a huge difference. And if, I'm going to give you a ride one day, and we'll, we'll, we'll show that. But then again, when you go to cruise, it's maximum efficiency again because of the uh, okay. injection. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, a lot of great information there, Jan. Mm -hmm. um, I think we probably ought to back off now and let people come and ask you the specific questions they wanted. Hopefully, I've hit the high points that everybody wants to ask, but other people are going to get much more down in the weeds, and you're able to answer those questions. How do we find you on the web, Jan? Uh, VikingAircraftEngines.com. Pretty simple. Yep. All and right. there's a forum. You can go to that, too. All right. You can find lots more about not only this engine, but all kinds of affordable aviation products on ByDanJohnson.com. Thanks for joining Jan Eggenfeller and myself here atop the Viking aircraft engine display at the DeLand Sport Aviation Showcase 2016.